I am happy having the opportunity to introduce Sila Arianos Tot from the Corvinus University of Budapest. He is currently a PhD student and he is writing his thesis on republicanism. He had a lecture at our Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory in Belgrade, uh, a lecture on republicanism and engagement. He has also published something important in our journal Philosophy and Society, and he also contributed to our book on engagement in Hungarian. Szilard signed our call for solidarity, I suppose because he, he was convinced that we have to defend science from politics, authoritarian politics first of all. That is to say we have to defend our institute from the bad influence of the Ministry of Science in Serbia. Dear Szilard, thank you very much for supporting us. And now we are going to have a short conversation on certain topics that seem to be very important in the context of our struggle. So firstly, at the moment, it seems that in many countries, democratic institutions and norms are being destroyed by state power, by charismatic leaders under quotation marks, and given that we are not confronting these challenges and tendencies for the first time, please tell me what do you think of today's situation in contemporary Serbia? Well, I mean, I'm not sure that I would concentrate exclusively or even primarily on, on, on leader, leadership in itself, as you mentioned. I think that what is really important to see in these countries, such as Serbia, but also around several other countries in the region, one of them, of course, the most uh, well-known example being Hungary, is more the institutional transformation of these political systems. There was, uh, after the regime change uh, in 2000 in Serbia, uh, uh, about a decade-long long development of, of, uh, of new institutions, which, of course, incomplete and, and, and never really lived up to the expectations of local liberals, but nevertheless it was a project, an ongoing project. And of course in the other countries in the region, so Hungary and all the other countries in, in East Central Europe, this process began a decade earlier, in the early 90s after the fall of the, so the communist regimes. And of course these were also projects of creating liberal democracies throughout the region. And, uh, but, uh, but in several countries, and of course, they were also incomplete and never really lived up to the expectations of, of the local liberals themselves. But nevertheless, I mean, uh, we, we, we could say that in, in most of the countries uh, of East Central Europe, uh, up, in, up until uh, a, a decade ago, uh, there were fairly consolidated liberal democracies. Um, not necessarily of the quality that, that you might have in Western Europe or America, but, but still consolidated liberal democracies. And then something happened, something which is by some people called a U-turn or whatever. Uh, several countries began, began to veer off of this track, and Serbia is one of them. I mean, uh, ever since uh, 2012, we are witnessing a, a, a gradual institutional transformation in the Serbian political regime that uh, that is well i mean of course there's a debate on on, on what to call such regimes uh, but they're definitely not liberal democracies anymore even if they were uh, even even if we we give that they were before uh, these years and 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 turn into something else uh, uh, some call these hybrid regimes other call them competitive authoritarian regimes etc cetera, etc cetera. i don't think that right now the terminology is that that relevant what the point is about this regime i think what, what what's really relevant about them is that unlike liberal democracies which uh, have a general aim of separating the powers in society what these regimes do is concentrate power to 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 to, to, to a very large degree they don't go quite as far as as outright authoritarian regimes go such as russia or belarus or other countries or turkey but they still go quite far Thank you. In countries like Hungary, Turkey, Poland, and first of all, Serbia, 
where the scientific community is faced with many barriers and repressive mechanisms, where scientists are witnessing the rise of authoritarian tendencies, and officials are often accusing scientists and researchers that they are a kind of an elitist, but still anarchist group that uh, has to be controlled and supervised as much as possible, as it happened in the case of our institute. Uh, what would you say, what can we learn from these examples with regard to the relations between the academic community and the wider public sphere? Well, I mean, it's, it's my somewhat skeptical opinion that uh, all, although uh, the governments that you mentioned uh, create this image in, in which academia and especially the humanities departments uh, are, are, are presented as, as a very relevant or a very important uh, uh, you know, player in, in, in politics or the institutional world or whatever, I mean, I'm afraid that the reality is somewhat mundane. I mean, these uh, the even though uh, you might uh, think of the of, of the analogous uh, example of Hungary, of course, where where in the past years you uh, we were the witnesses of the government campaign against the Central European University, but then also against uh, the uh, the research institutes of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Of course, the government in both cases presented these institutions as uh, either foreign agents or uh, you know the, the powerful hands of uh, of um, extended hands of, uh, of 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 an international network that operates in society and uh, you know and creates this huge impact on on on, on ordinary citizens i think that this is simply not the true i mean these these institutions and especially the research institutes produce their work for a very limited audience and, and therefore cannot uh, claim to have the kind of influence on wider society as the, as the gov government propaganda against them claims that they have. I mean, that's just, I don't believe that that's a reality. Uh, what, what the reality is, is that independent of the actual influence of these institutions, uh, the governments, the two mentioned governments, both the Serbian and the Hungarian, uh, are trying to centralize power. I mean, this fits into this, uh, uh, this image that I described earlier, uh, the actual, again, the actual impact of these institutions is not that relevant because I don't, so it's not so much the actual influence of these institutions that's relevant, but more uh, the, 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 what these, what these uh, 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 stories are mostly about is about concentration of, of, of power in these societies. It's not so much about the actual influence that these institutions have in society, it's about the governments, both of the mentioned governments, you know, Serbia and Hungary, trying to gain more and more control uh, over over more and more spheres of life, and, and and you know, scientific research is one of these spheres. But nevertheless, I don't, I wouldn't overestimate its its its, its way. Now, it's an interesting question as to uh, as to what what the what the result is, even when the centralization takes place. So again, I would call or or um, attention to the example of Hungary. Um, of course, CEU was technically kicked out of the country, but then if you look at the other example, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, or I mean the, the research institutes of, of, of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, so what happened is that the government uh, gained, uh, very, uh, well, I mean, as for the power relations, strict control over these institutions, but doesn't really interfere thus far, even though it's been quite some time since the institutional change happened. So, so I would say that it's not necessarily about the government's will to interfere into the actual research that's done. It's more about who controls the funds and who has the last word in, 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 in cases of research. But, but as to how severe the, the, the restriction, the actual restrictions will be, that's an open question. And, and, and thus far, I think that the evidence is, is, is somewhat uh, mixed in that regard. Following this line, what do you think, how should we understand and defend the autonomy of the scientific community? How should our strategies look like? Well, that's a very difficult question. 
Of course, the case of your institute in Belgrade is a very special one. Uh, I have to admit to you that personally, I was very surprised that uh, that that you, that you managed to to to, to beat back the, the the government's onslaught against you because this is definitely not the norm in in, in our region. The, the 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 instruments that these institutions have to fight against state power are extremely limited. I mean. Uh, again, if we look at the analogy in, in Hungary, then what, what you could see is that they tried all kinds of, uh, you know, strategies from open confrontation to, to, a, to, to a less com uh, confrontative and, and, uh, attitude and, and trying to, you know, communicate with the government or whatever. But it, it doesn't seem to me that a whole lot depends on what they, what they do in that regard, uh, at, at, least, at least in certain countries. Uh, the, the standard explanation of why your institute survived the onslaught is, of course, uh, you know, an explanation that's linked to the, 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 the structural position of the country itself, which is that the West uh, and, and, and European countries um, can still put a pressure on Serbia, unlike other countries that are already in the European Union, because, simply because you know, they're, they're still, the Serbia government is still trying to show a friendly face to these Western uh, powers, whilst uh, you know other governments like the Hungarian one doesn't necessarily or doesn't need to anymore. So my short answer is that I don't know, and 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 also that 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 in in, in some way it doesn't really matter either, because in many cases it doesn't matter what the institutions and the universities do. The the the, the sheer uh, disparity of power between the players here is is, is so big. Uh, that uh, that sometimes, uh, or or probably most of the cases, probably most of the cases, the 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 outcome is not uh, dependent on on what uh, on what kind of resistance the 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 university itself shows, but on other factors that that uh, I guess happen behind closed doors and we don't really see or luck. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, my final question is the following one. Which measures and modalities of social engagement should be used within the framework of the academic community, regardless of the fact whether the community is confrontating uh, government or a uh, bad institution? So how should social engagement look like in academic community as such? Uh, well, I mean, of course, uh, academia can struggle with its limited resources. A a again, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, the, the the best that uh, academia can do, and the social sciences in particular, is is not to give in, but uh, try to give a, a an accurate picture of of what's happening uh, in in society, uh, help us understand what's happening in society, and also, of course. Uh, have a critical role in, in, in assessing what, what the problems with society are. I mean, this is, of course, a, a function that, social, that the social sciences don't necessarily uh, uh, live up to, you know, in these countries. I mean, there's so many things that we simply don't know about, uh, you know, Serbian society or other societies in East Central Europe either, for, for that matter. Uh, nevertheless, I'm, again, in this regard, also somewhat skeptical. And uh, the simple reason is that, uh, you know, the, the products that uh, the, the humanities departments and social scientists um, produce are usually, I mean, in most of the cases, they are uh, followed by a pretty thin uh, audience. Uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's very rare that a research project gets to, to a wider, wider audience. So, so I'm, 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 in a way, I'm, you know, uh, continuing what, what I answered to you in one of your previous questions. Uh, uh, you know, simply, simply, with, you know, mentioning again the fact that that, that, that these are, you know, more or less, you know, uh, elitistic uh, institutions. Uh, and uh, by the way, I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong with that. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, nevertheless, this is just a part of part of reality, and uh, and um, <laughs> hope that the you know the media. Uh, uh, finds more interest in, in what you guys do. I mean, I, I surely hope so. I mean, but that's not, not, that doesn't necessarily only depend on you guys, but it also depends on, uh, you know, the, 
the other side being receptive to it, and particularly the media. You know. Okay, dear Stilad, thank you once again for signing our call, and thank you very much for the interview. Thank you, Mark.